the party master on Up and Go. Good morning to you and welcome to Thursday's radio. It is that time of the year. We're getting closer to Christmas and uh, the place is looking as such. We're here to get you through the morning, to get you up and go. So just before I signed on a while ago, I was almost late in signing on because I was browsing through this article, which uh, the headline itself uh, caught my attention. Rohan Marley says his ex, Lauren Hill, sparked his entrepreneurial side. And uh, I want to share it with you. Rohan Marley uh, may have come from a family of influential and renowned people, but he says it was the mother of his five children, Lauren Hill, who sparked his entrepreneurial side. In an interview recently, Marley admitted that it was after Hill got pregnant with their first child, Zion, that she pushed him to find means of securing income for the expanding family. So he says, and I quote, One day, me and her were hanging out, and according to Rohan, she ended up getting pregnant. Okay? And he's, <laughs> he says, being she pregnant, I'm quoting him, and being the man that I am, I knew she didn't know anything about children yet. So now that I knew that she had to work, I say, brothers, I have to go live in New Jersey because Lauren is pregnant and I have to be around. He continues. So I went there and while I'm there, she said, what do you do? <laughs> I told you it's an interesting story. Lauren Hill says to Rohan, what do you do? <laughs> That's when she's asking that question. He says, I said, what do you mean? I came to do the house stuff. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 no. Your dad has an office. You need to go check that out. Well, Marley did not oppose, and he sought to discover what he could at the office, as expected. And he was introduced to music-related products while there. He says, I went there, Bob Marley's office and took all eight volumes of my dad's publishing rights. There are eight volumes, and I said, I need to learn this. And while I was learning, I introduced my family to a lawyer. I learned everything regarding my father's business. And that was on the inspiration, in fact, on the suggestion of the mother of his five children, Lauren Hill. And now you know that they're raking in big profits through publishing of those works of his father. Well done, Rohan. All right, it's uh, approaching that time when we get inside of WTF. Uh, we call that What the Fact. There's another fact that has to do with Christmas, and this time uh, it has to do with uh, the, the song We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And uh, so it's 25 minutes now past 7 o'clock. It's time for WTF What the Fact. We Wish You a Merry Christmas was originally a threat. Hmm. That's what I said when I saw this. Now, the ever-popular song was initially sung loudly and repeatedly by crowds of rowdy, lower-class servants demanding booze from their masters or else. For instance, we won't go until we get some, is what they were saying. The identity of the author and composer of We Wish You a Merry Christmas remains a mystery to date. However, its origins are widely believed to be the 16th century, where it was dedicated to carolers who performed to entertain the rich and the powerful. Historical facts relating to a song that we like to sing at this time of the year. Right now, uh, while we're here having, I suspect, right across Jamaica feel a good weather this morning, it's not the same uh, in the Philippines because news is emerging of a super, what they call a super typhoon, uh, Rai, that slammed into the Philippines and tens of thousands of individuals have had to evacuate um, this morning. Rai is also called Odette, strangely enough. And we understand uh, it slammed into the eastern coast of the Philippines uh, late yesterday afternoon, bringing torrential rain and the threat of widespread flooding across uh, that region. The storm intensified rapidly as it approached the coast and uh, was strengthening from a Category 1 to a Category 5 storm in just 24 hours. 
This is a powerful storm. They call it a super typhoon. By the time it made landfall, uh, the storm had reached sustained winds of 260 kilometers per hour, which is the equivalent of 160 miles per hour, with gusts over 300 kilometers per hour or 185 miles per hour. Uh, our information this morning is that around 198,000 people have already evacuated from their homes to government shelters, according to the country's National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, as they have put out in a, re a release. So um, we just want to hope and pray that uh, we haven't seen any indication of lives lost. We certainly hope that we don't get anything like that coming out of the Philippines. But we wish them well as they are trying to make it past this uh, powerful super typhoon no doubt is causing a whole lot of damage in that region all right it's time now for a proverb of the day ladies and gentlemen and i think we have a short one for you and then we'll give you the uh first the translation and then the meaning so here is our proverb of the day she got too afraid of grabble say that again she got too afraid of grabble okay then Okay. She got too afraid of grabble. See, they know. <laughs> she got too afraid of grabble. I can imagine um, some young person out there going, what did he just say? Did I hear? Chig what is chigga, mommy? <laughs> you know what I mean? She got too afraid of grabble. Well, the translation, chigga toes are afraid of gravel. And what that means, you see, those with an injury know what to avoid to prevent pain and making the injury worse that's all it means she got too afraid of gravel those who have an injury know what to avoid to prevent pain and making that injury worse all right that was our proverb of the day it's now 11 minutes before the hour of eight o'clock Not good news coming out of Puerto Rico, as in fact uh, the nation is in mourning as a very, very popular music producer by the name of Flo La Movie has died in a plane crash that happened yesterday. He and his longtime partner and their four-year-old son, as well as other members of his family, were on a small plane that were uh, they were heading to uh, Orlando, Florida and they didn't make it at all. We understand that the pilot attempted to land in the Dominican Republic, but uh, it didn't. they didn't make it. And uh, he's very, very popular, has produced a number of hit songs. Um, it, it's not clear even at this time as to what might have caused that accident, uh, but uh, there was a plane crash and this popular music producer, um, whose real name is Jose Angel Hernandez, was aboard the flight with six relatives, according to uh, the information that we have gleaned. And as I mentioned, uh, his four-year-old son, Jaden, uh, was also killed. And uh, a number of family members were also killed. The two uh, dead crew members, Louis Alberto El Jururi and Victor Emilio Herrera, they also perished in, in that crash. So Flo um, is known to produce a number of hits, um, in the, especially the, the urban market, um, Latin uh, music, um, songs such as Te Bote. And he had worked with uh, people like J Balvin and Don Omar, and uh, they have also reacted to this tragedy. Um, it, it, is really, uh, it is really a shocker to, to uh, our friends over there in Puerto Rico. And um, this has re hit them really, really hard. All right, we have a very special guest at this time, and uh, we understand that uh, Charmaine Redway has uh, been to over 30 countries and still counting. Um, she, has been, she has been a globe, globe trot, uh, trotter, really, and um, she took her first trip uh, to see her parents at the age of 16 uh, when she went to London. Well, she's now a young woman and has uh, really been exploring the great unknown uh, ever since. We're happy to have this wonderful globe tr trotter to share some experiences with us at this time. Good morning, Charmaine. How are you doing? Hi, RTB. I'm great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Season's greetings. And you too. Much appreciated. So, you are a globe trotter. 
And you've been to over yes. thir- over 30 countries, uh, Charmaine? Yes, yes. So it started. I just wanted to make a little correction. So I went to London. My brothers um, were there. So I, my parents actually sent me on a plane for the first time. So I met them at the airport when I was 16. And that was when the travel bug hit me. Um, so over the years, I've kind of been, you know, I set out a bucket list of places I'd like to go. I budgeted. I prioritized. And um, get, I got on some travel deals, mm-hmm. um, cheap flights when I could find them. And then I, you know, I just set out. <laughs> <laughs> so you took that, that first fly, flight that you mentioned, uh, you traveled by yourself at, at 16, right? Yeah, I went on a plane by myself. And um, I got there and met with my brothers and my other family members. But mm-hmm. that was, yeah. Um, what is that experience like, though? Your first flight traveling alone. Uh, what can you recall about uh, that <laughs> that trip? I remember getting to the airport and meeting another girl who was, I think she was about 16 or 17 as well. So she was like my travel buddy on the flight. Okay, okay. Um, it would be nice to reconnect with her again. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, yeah. All right. Now, um, give us an idea as to some of the places that you have been. 30 countries, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, I've been to France, Greece, Indonesia, Belgium, England, Costa Rica, Colombia. It's a long list. (laughs) Obviously. What about the Caribbean region? Um, Antigua, Uh Barbados, Trinidad. And the list goes on and yeah. on and on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anything that stands out in your mind in terms of uh, what you might have experienced or any country that you visited that, uh, whether it be an attraction or something that you were able to do that you really can't, just can't forget? Yeah, I want to say first before I answer that, uh-huh. knowing a better than yard. Okay. Like I just said that first (laughs) yes the vibe in jamaica is unmatched but i will say in terms of beauty um greece was absolutely amazing um really breathtaking and just straight out of a storybook um so that was probably one of my best location in terms of beauty Mm -hmm. um persons are listening to us right now uh charmaine they want to travel maybe travel by themselves um what what advice would you give to a young woman who wants to uh, go out and explore like you have and travel to other countries. What would you say to such a person this morning? Um, travel is not out of reach, as we may think. A lot of people think it's super expensive. and I mean, it can be if you don't plan properly, but there are tons of websites that you can find really cheap flights. Um, make a plan. Put an itinerary together. Um, and be safe. You know, as women, we are always conscious of, you know, any any issues that may occur or, you know, we, we always want to travel safe. So there, I, I posted on my page, the Charm Travels on Instagram, a few tips that you can use when you solo travel. Like make sure that you're always vigilant of your surroundings. Always Google and research the area. Read the reviews for any places that you're booking. And make sure that when you're checking into a hotel that you bring one of those devices that you can lock your door from inside or you can slide it under the door and it alarms if anyone tries to open it. Mm -hmm. So just little things that you can do to stay safe and then just, you know, boldly go travel the world. And I just want to say also a lot of countries, they love Jamaica. So if you're trying to get a, a visa to travel there, it, it, it's, it's easier for even trying to get a visa as a U.S. citizen for anywhere else. Like Turkey is one such place. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get an e-visa online. I think it's $50 as opposed to if you're applying from the U.S. where it's 180 oh. And um, it's easy, but it's just the information. People just don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we thank you for putting that forward. Um isn't it much more challenging, though, traveling at this time during a pandemic? And um, yes. what are your experiences like in that regard? Yes, it's definitely more challenging. Um, you obviously have to keep abreast with all the changes that happen because countries change their regulations and their requirements, um, you know, on a whim. So it's always good to keep up with that. Always just still keep in mind that you are in a pandemic 
my my idea is that we aren't necessarily going to get out of this pandemic right away. So make a plan to be safe. Always wear your mask and practice the same social distances as you would at home. Mm-hmm. Um, but that has cautioned me, but it hasn't stopped me from from you know traveling if I do have somewhere in mind. And uh, I have to ask you, um, where next? <laughs> <laughs> has that yet oh been de- has that yet been decided? People ask me. <laughs> I have no, you know, I have. I don't usually say where I'm going. It's usually a surprise. And also, I will say, when you're a solo traveler, it's best to like post or tell where you are after you left or when you're at the departure lounge leaving, because you just never know. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's another <laughs> so very important can, tip. Yeah. Yes. 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 Do you do you meet um, like long lasting friends on, on 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 these trips, or does it doesn't it get lonely? Some persons might ask. Well, honestly, I took my first trip solo where I planned everything. I stayed in a hotel by myself. I stayed at an Airbnb. I planned all the um, the excursions by myself. I I did that for the first time this year because usually whenever I say I'm going somewhere, my friends will they're like I'm coming. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so this was the actual first time when I went to Morocco, and this is kind of what went viral when I posted that I took my first solo, solo trip to African country with no one with me. And I met so many people, and now it's like I'm planning to go back with a group just to connect with some of those people who have given me great tips on places to stay, help me save money on, on accommodation, find great food. It's always good to connect with the locals because you'll save so much. You're going to see a lot of restaurants and hotel recommendations online that are attract, you know, they're attractive to tourists. Mm-hmm. But when you really get to know the locals, that's when you you get a better experience and you can save some money. <laughs> yeah. So so nothing in your travels so far um, is going to stop you from going on and traveling uh, as much as you have been in the past. You have not had any negative experiences that um, would want to uh, slow you down. Honestly, I have not had a terrible experience. The worst thing that has happened to me was I got kicked off a flight when I had a group of my family and friends me. That was the worst thing that happened, but we were able to rebook. But what I do, I'm very detailed with planning my trip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I make sure that I put every hotel, restaurant, excursion, everybody's phone number, directions, location, everything is on a document before I leave. Mm-hmm. And what I've started doing now, um, it's very important if you're traveling by if you're traveling by yourself to notify your um, embassy or government for their country for which the passport they hold. Mm -hmm. Um, It's very important to do that, especially if you're a solar traveler. And also, if you are able to share your location with a family member or a friend back home, it's it's good to do that now that we have technology to assist us with that. All right. Uh, So can we follow you? I see a lot of pictures being uh, posted on our screens even as we speak. Can we? Yes. Absolutely. It's Charm Travels with a Z at the end. Uh-huh. C-H-A-R-M-T-R-A-V-E-L-Z. Uh-huh. Yep, on Instagram. All and right. then there's a link to everywhere else. Oh, fantastic. We definitely will follow you and I wish you all the best. and uh, Thank all, you. All the best for the season and uh, with your travels and all the best for the new year when it comes, Charmaine. All the best to you. Thank you, and the same to you. Much, much appreciated. Thank that you. was a chat with Charmaine Redway. She's a Jamaican globe trotter. I met one such individual years ago, too. Um, a few years ago, I was coming back from Florida, and uh, I ended up sitting beside an attorney at law. Um, her name is Suzanne J. DuBose, and she's an American. She lives in Texas and practices there. She was actually just coming out of Haiti. At the time, they had a lot of riots. And the the airport, she just missed it by the skin of her teeth. <laughs> so she had actually gotten out before. just before they closed off the air the, the airport, and um, she was actually I don't remember how many countries, but at that time she was just traveling. Um, I think she has been to like maybe forty or thirty odd, forty odd countries or something. You know, people like that. Um, I, I doubt it, but um, I, um, 
How many countries do you um, have you visited? I haven't counted. I've been to a few, but I uh, nowhere in the uh, no thirties or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember th that that same attorney I'm telling you about, uh, Suzanne. She already had everything that she wanted to do in Jamaica. So she says, uh, hey, Richie, after we got into talking and right. so on, she says, you know, I'd love to go to um, Weddy Weddy. I said, what? <laughs> you you yeah. know about Weddy Weddy? Yeah, yeah, she says, research. yeah, I have to go to Weddy Weddy. She was coming in like on a, on a Tuesday yeah. and she had Weddy Weddy for, for Wednesday. So she says, can you hook me up with a promoter so I get uh, easy access and everything? I called up, um, uh, not Weeper, but uh, my good friend, uh, one of the selectors with, 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 with uh, Stone Love. And... Um, uh, not not Billy, um, not a Bridgerton man, big time Bridgerton man. I, I still remember his name, and um, he he uh, made made sure that she was okay, okay for the night. And she told me the following morning she had a great time, and they got her in a cab back to her hotel, and uh, then she went off to Montego Bay, and then she went on to Negril, and she was posting all kinds of stuff there. Some people like that. Real trotters. Yeah, real travelers, globe trotters. And uh, we are going to another interview segment. We also have another interview segment coming up on top of the hour at 10 this morning. And uh, just before we introduce our guest uh, at this time, let's tell you that uh, Pencils for Kids began in the 1990s with one woman returning to her rural hometown of Quick Step in St. Elizabeth uh, here in Jamaica to give back. Now, we, we're told that she would graciously donate school and medical supplies to the uh, school community every year and uh, she unfortunately passed in the year 2007 but guess what her youngest son who goes by the name Randy Griffiths was so inspired by his mother's uh, generosity that he formed pencils for kids to continue her legacy of giving back and so Pencils for Kids has grown from the Griffiths family to their extended family and also to include their friends. Each year, they continue to organize a group to journey to Jamaica and to bring supplies for kids and especially for uh, classroom uh, purposes. They have also begun to do various activities um, and they have enrolled a number of volunteers who assist them in these projects. We are joined at this time by Randy Griffiths, the founder of President uh, the founder and president of Pencils for Kids. Good morning, Randy. How are you? Good morning, brother. I'm good. How is everything? Everything, everything is all right, bro. Um, season's greetings, first of all, and I hope that uh, yourself and your family are doing well. Thank you so much. Congratulations on what you have been able to do so far with uh, Pencils for Kids. Let me just ask you, Randy, um, what inspired the name itself, Pencils for Kids? Um, it, it's uh, it coming from the basic as far as a writing tool. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, you need a pencil for, to write your name and all them things there. So oh. we just, we just start, we, we just want to start from basic as far as education. And then, you know, a pen and a tablet and all these other things that transpire afterwards. Mm -hmm. And for kids, because you're catering primarily to youngsters at at, uh, at various uh, levels in school, right? Right. Kids, it, it's like we want to make sure they're the one who benefit from everything we're doing because we don't want to give them food and this and that and then go, you know, go to the bathroom, we'll get rid of it. We want to give them education so they can't get rid of it mm -hmm. at all. Totally understood. So we understand then that you were inspired by your own mom's uh, generosity, and you were you decided to start this um, this particular organization. Tell us about some of uh, what you have been able to do through the years with this organization. Uh, it, it's so much. We we started um, as far as quick step uh, fixing the field, the cricket field, mm -hmm. and um, the fencing around the school. At one point, the, the, the kids, whenever it rains, the teachers asked us to, to put a, a um, what do they call that? Uh, like, uh, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Talk like a, it, it's, it's like a covering. Okay. So the, the kids wouldn't get wet coming from the classroom to mm -hmm. the kitchen. Oh. And we build a library. We build a... A garage for a bus that we just provided 
two years ago. Great. And now we're uh, building a basic school. Also in Quick Step? Yes, everything is in Quick Step. We also do a lot of scholarship programs. Mm -hmm. And um, that doesn't take away from other places in Jamaica. We just want to actually focus on Quick Step for now. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you. Um, so you're still uh, going at it and you're still making contributions. Um, how, how do you go about generating uh, the, the funds and so on? Uh, do you, we understand that it's not just you, but members of your family and others who are also partnering with you. Is that right? Yeah, yes, absolutely. First, it start from yourself, you know. If people don't see that you're not into what you're doing, they're not going to support you. So people see that I believe in what I'm doing and uh, consistently doing things. Mm -hmm. So uh, my family is on board, friends, and uh, just a lot of different people that's coming on board now. How because much? they see the changes that we're doing in the community. Yeah. How much satisfaction does it bring you personally when, you, when you're able to, to give back? It, 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 it's like the joy for me to know that I could help one person and just, you know, help the community develop. It's just a joy. Mm -hmm. No doubt you've had some challenges along the way. As a charity, um, is, it, is it difficult? Uh, is it challenging trying to, um, to, you know, to get the supplies in and so on? Any challenges that you've had that you'd like to highlight? <laughs> Numerous of challenges when it comes when it comes to uh, the custom or when it comes to uh, the um, shipping and all these things. I've I've been delayed numerous of time when it comes to clearing my goods, mm. and it, it's a at some point I couldn't get it done in December. I have to come back a month later to get it done. So it's very challenging when you have no control over certain things. But still. You press on. <laughs> uh, absolutely, yes, you have to. Yeah, yeah. You can't give up. Uh, if there are persons listening right now, uh, Randy, and would love to, you know, uh, get on board and to be of assistance, maybe even to volunteer, um, how can you be contacted uh, at Pencils for Kids? Well, we could be reached at uh, www.pencils, P E N C I L S, the number four. K-I-D-S dot org. Or we on Instagram or Facebook and um, any other social media at Pencil for Kids. All right. All right. I don't know what plans you have for Christmas, whether or not you'll be in the in that giving mood or just, uh, you know, chilling with family. But whatever you do for the Christmas Yuletide season, I wish you well. I commend you and all those who support you on what you have been able to achieve so far. And uh, we wish you uh, continued strength as you go forward in giving. Thank you so much for talking with us this morning. I thank you so much for having me. Randy Griffith, ladies and gentlemen, founder and president of Pencils for Kids. Are you satisfied with the traction that you gained, though, from the, the previous release, which was Someone Loves You, Honey, a song which was made popular by J.C. Lodge, and, um, and, and we loved it a lot. But how much traction did you get with that in the wider world? Uh, um, honestly... <clears throat> A lot of people, you see, because that song was a hit back in the 80s when JC did it. So it's like a lot of people, they're familiar with it. So a lot of people, they love it. I'm getting so much positive response. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. Have you gotten a chance to perform that like on a stage yet? Yes. Okay. I performed it first. I first performed that, that song on the Jamaica International Kite Festival oh. in 2019. Mm-hmm. And you got very good response, I suspect. Trust me, that was my closeout song, and the people they were just going crazy for more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, I, I suspect because I know that one of your strong points is your performance, your ability to perform and connect with your audiences. Um, yes. You must be looking forward to those days when you can uh, get your regular bookings and uh, be out there, maybe even touring, aren't you? Of course, I am just so excited. Excited and I can't wait. I'm very anxious. I just can't wait for the place to be open so we can travel and just, you know, have back some normalcy again. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, for, for the listeners, for the benefit of the listeners, uh, her dad is Admiral Tibet. Uh, it would be a redundant question to ask who you got the singing talent from, but does your mom also <laughs> sing? <laughs> My mom, she tries. She, she tries. tries. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's just say she doesn't have as many hit songs as, say, Admiral, your dad does, no, right? <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. Please say hello to your parents for me. Now, let's talk a little bit about this uh, Christmas carol that you decided to cover. Why do do you hear what I hear? Why? I've always loved that song as a little girl growing up. I used to sing it in primary school like so often, and you know, I've always loved that song. That it's it, it's for me when I hear that song, it is just Christmas. It feels like Christmas. It gives me that feel, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a beautiful song. So it's really nothing special because actually. My team and I were planning on doing a Christmas like EP for next year. So you will hear a lot more Christmas carols. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. And that is yes. strictly Christmas music you're talking about. Yes, yes. All right. We're looking we're looking <laughs> forward to that. Uh, any other project for early next year in terms of singles, uh, maybe um, original material or another cover? What can we look forward to or what are you looking forward to in 2022? 2022, definitely. Um, we're working on my album. Oh. We're working on my album, so we're still compiling the song mm -hmm. for that. Um, next year, January, I have like a, a new track that I'm going to drop, mm -hmm. which is kind of a different style from anything that I've ever done. Really? Yes, it's going to be different. So you're going to hear more of my versatility next year. Um, hopefully the place will be open to where I can perform, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're hoping well, we're for We're looking that. forward to that. We're looking forward to a lot of new stuff next year. Like I said, I'm going to have, like, um, a lot of new materials with different sounds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, that's our focus right now. We're just working on putting together the material so that next year we just kick off really strong with a bang <laughs> yeah well listen you're a very very talented uh female and we have been in your support for a while and we will be uh well into the future so long as you maintain these standards which are very very high and uh we know that you will so all the best going forward what you want to say where can you be um followed for instance give us your social media handles if you will all right, for social media it is shave music mm -hmm. s-h-a-v-a music that's s H A V A music, all one word. Uh -huh. And that's what Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere on social media. Once you type me in, if you can't find me on, on Instagram or Facebook, you can just type my name in Shave Music on Google and you'll see me there. All right. I noticed you also did a collaboration with Chris Gale for, for uh, recently. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I mean, a lot of people love that song. Give me a love. A lot of people love that song. So, um, I first, I first wrote the song. It was my idea. I wrote the song, and then we sent it to Chris. Chris uh -huh. heard the song. He loved it, so he jumped on it right away. Yeah, big, big tune. We've played it before here. Chave, thank you so much. Uh, I want you to say it to your fans and to Jamaica. Maybe just to wish everybody a merry Christmas before we go to playing that Christmas uh, carol from you. Okay, I just want to wish each and every one of you guys a Merry Christmas and please to stay safe. It's important that we do so in these times. So please to stay safe. Chave, great talking with you. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Great talking with you. Take good care, all right? One of those segments here uh, on the bridge that a lot of persons look forward to as we speak on constitutional matters. And uh, this is a sponsored segment that is aired every uh, Thursday morning at this time. For about 15 minutes, we get a chance to make a connection with the Office of the Public De Defender. And we speak uh, on a number of constitutional matters. She's going to be joining us in a moment's time. But just to tell you that the aim of this feature is to inform Jamaicans of their constitutional rights. Now, whenever issues happen overseas, it is evident, evident that people know and are well equipped to defend their human rights. How come? How do we at home in Jamaica access this information? That's a very critical question. And where do we go to find out what our constitutional rights are? I'd like to now invite the public defender to help us through this uh, subject, accessing human rights information. 
uh, at the start of this feature right now. Good morning, Public Defender. Welcome. How are you? Hi, good morning. I'm very good, thank you. Looking forward to the holiday. Oh, yes? <laughs> yes. Um, quiet time. Okay. No, no, no parties. No parties? <laughs> no, no, none at all. <laughs> Not under this current DRMA, I suspect. <laughs> I, and I suspect so. Plus, it is better to be just quiet. Yes. And to be safe. And to be those we love. Family. Family, yes. Friends, yes. yes, community. Mm-hmm. I endorse that. Um, so, so, Madam Public Defender, we're looking at accessing human rights information at the start this morning. Uh, how do we at home in Jamaica access this kind of information? First of all, um, we need to start teaching civics in our schools. It is where children begin to learn about what their entitlements are as children and also what their responsibilities are. We use this program to inform Jamaica and around the world of the work that we're doing to protect rights. Because remember that our responsibility is to investigate allegations that are made where someone says my constitutional rights have been infringed or are likely to be infringed. And it's important for everyone to understand that we don't work as attorneys. In fact, the law specifically prohibits me from going to court or Um, to appear before a tribunal Mm -hmm. or otherwise. So what we try and do is to receive the complaint, investigate the complaint, find the facts, establish the facts in the complaint, and then make a determination as to whether or not a right has been violated. Mm -hmm. Now, following our conversation last week, when we spoke about Harborview, yes, this is the, the citizens of Harborview, Harbor Drive, Harbor and Harbor Heights, yes, uh huh, Harbor Drive, okay, which is in the main Harborview housing scheme, and you will remember that the Harborview housing scheme was the first housing scheme established in Jamaica in 1962, three, mm-hmm. 1963, yes. where their right to their privately owned property and their right also to be treated equitably and humanely, we say, have been violated. We have situations in Jamaica where there has been a boom in our construction industry. And that is good because it's good for the economy. It's good for the creation of jobs. And it creates opportunities of new housing for persons. However, it has also created a number of other problems for residents who live in the communities where new development is taking place. And this is a problem. In that, the residents in these residential communities, primarily single-family homes, have not been engaged in the process to say, well, we are going to be building a high rise next door to where you live. Now, particularly as we're talking to the tri-state and Canada, we know that in the developed world, 
when there's going to be a development, it is plastered all over the site. Artist impression of what is going to take place, um, layout of apartments, um, studio, whatever, whatever, permit, conditions of permit laid out, um, who you need to call for any queries or concerns that you have. And the entire process is laid out in a way that everybody can pass and read. What we have here is a little tiny sign on the zinc fence with a permit number. We are saying that these developments need to be done in a way that is completely transparent. We forget something. That where we have had single-family homes, we are forgetting that those persons who live in those communities paid mortgages whether to bank, building society, or otherwise, at exceedingly high interest rates. Some of our interest rates for owning a home in this country went as high as 17%, something that would be alarming in the tri-state, where they are accustomed to low mortgages. And if you are you're serving the army, it's even lower. Not so in Jamaica. And therefore, we have to give regard and respect to these ordinary Jamaicans. Some of them are professionals. Mm -hmm. Some of them are business people. Some of them are teachers and so on. Who bought their home yes. in a community where they were single families. And these communities have come under tremendous pressure because they do not know what has been planned for their communities. I, I want to bring all I, we're saying is mm -hmm. share the information. I have not been able to get it. I will tell you that my letter of June twenty fourth um, to Nepal asking for specific material, Reen Norbrook Drive, Golden Triangle, New Kingston, Vineyard Town, and letter again of December 7th, asking for information because the communities come to us. I haven't gotten any answers yet. And I made the point to say that when we are unable answer the concerns of the community. Sometimes some people feel that we're not doing our work. And that is far from the truth. Well, we, we need transparency. We, we want to thank you for, for what you are doing, in fact, on behalf of uh, those residents, especially over there in places like Bay Shore and Melbrook Heights. Um, for those who are not familiar with what we're talking about, you might not have been hearing us last week. Um, the, the, the Mosaic Project, which was implemented yes. in 2015 to combat the problem of land slippage and drainage in surrounding yes. areas. They, th that's the project that uh, the public defender is talking about. A number of state agencies are, in fact, involved in that project. We understand that the Office of Disaster Preparedness and uh, Emergency Management, ODPEM, they received the funding from the World Bank to carry out the project and they contracted the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation to supervise the project and the National Works Agency to implement the project. Now, residents over there are having some negative repercussions to this development of the, pro uh, the Mosaic Project, and some of the problems that they're experiencing include soil erosion beneath, beneath their homes, and that is what the public defender is highlighting. Um, uh, you, you've spoken, the way, and the way you have, I don't get the feeling that you've uh, gotten the kind of responses that you'd have expected so far based on those um, deliberations. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. The nutshell of the matter is that a gully was built behind the homes on Harbour Drive. 
So this gully was to be the collection point for water running off the hills up at Harbour Heights. And this gully also is unpaved and it has massive water pipes. So the back fences of residents on Harbour Drive were removed and a gully dug. And from 2015, we have had floods, we have had heavy rains, we have experienced climate change where we have short, heavy, heavy rain. The gully flood come down into people's yards, tear away the back the um the backyard, tear down whatever new fences people had erected. I understand as many as thirteen walls have actually collapsed in the area. Collapsed into the gully. Mm-hmm. In addition to which, Richie, not only the thirteen walls, a lady had built a storage house in her backyard. That too collapsed and dropped into the gully. <laughs> and notwithstanding our communication with the National Works Agency and with ODFEM, they say, oh, they have no money. The question is, can any agency of government claim not to have money when it is their duty to correct the damage they themselves created. Can we say we do not have money to restore the people on Harbour Drive? Could that be reasonable? The matter was discussed in Parliament sometime late last year. And we understood from the discussion that there was a parliamentary commitment that the money to fix the problem on Harbour Drive was contained in the contract for the building of that new highway from Harbour View out to Port Antonio. And we are now told that appears not to be so. But we see this as a parliamentary commitment. And still, every time it rains, these people on Harbour Drive live in grave apprehension for their safety. What might happen next? Places like Harbour Drive, Southern Cross Drive, uh, we mentioned before Bayshore and Melbrook Heights, some of those uh, affected communities. Uh, we really, We really appreciate the fact that you're continuing to uh, speak on this issue, and we hope that uh, there will be some attention given to the plight of these residents in the near future. And uh, I'm sure that you will not con- uh, refrain from continuing to highlight these issues on behalf of the people. And for that, we thank you. And I thank you so much. Looking forward to our next conversation. Same here. Thank you so much, uh, Public Defender. You, Have a good day. Best wishes to you, you too. too. That's Arlene Harrison-Henry, or public defender, uh, championing on behalf of, especially this morning, the residents of Harbour View who have been affected. A lot of talk is out there in relation to um, a matter that we have spoken about here on Up and Go. And here's a post that came to my attention, oddly. It says, instead of being motivated... Some people up in them feelings about Michael Leachin's yacht. Oh, really? I don't get it, says the post. And it continues, some feel draped because they've been fronting with the Audi, Benz, BMW, and Porsche. They took out a loan to get. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, I'm looking at the trail, and it seems like 
bad mind is active. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Let me tell you. Uh, all right, if I may say, Richie. Yeah. That is when you look at when you look at a situation like that, right? Yeah. When people talk about money and you, you know who have money, I you know this, that one have money, this one have money. <laughs> that is a different category. You understand what I'm saying to you, <laughs> right? Well, it's a Michael Leach in a sing, them no in a my league. <laughs> listen, listen. The, the, hold on, hold on. The, the more I find some bad mind truth. <laughs> no, no, go there. <laughs> Richie B, the, the party master. On Up and Go, The Bridge, 99FM.